What's up guys? This is the Board Game Roamer and I am back with my, I believe, first video of 2018. And it is going to be another playthrough of Too Many Bones and there's a story behind that. Uh, so if you um, may or may not have been watching the three gear lock playthrough that I started, um, that was back in uh, November, I believe is when I started it. So... I went through about, I believe it was five episodes, and I thought that I had finished them, recorded them, uploaded them, put them in the playlist. I very distinctively remember doing that in my own mind anyway, and uh, one of our subscribers sent me a uh, comment on the video not too long ago and said, yo what's up we're still waiting for the finale and i was like well that's odd i'm pretty sure it's out there maybe i just didn't link it long story short the videos the last two videos disappeared i don't have them backed up i had limited space on the device that i had so i had to free that space up for other stuff that i did later on so the long story short is the videos are gone so as a semi constellation prize and so that I could complete the playthrough because I do love this game and I want you guys to see the full playthrough um, I decided that I would redo the playthrough from start to finish making sure this time that I was very intentional of making sure all the videos got uploaded so the subscriber uh, that pointed that out uh, I let him pick out or I'm assuming him it may have been her but the subscriber picked out um, the characters he gave me a list of the ones that he wanted to see gave me a couple tyrants that he would like to see um, that were different actually than the goblin king which is what we started out with so here is our setup and i'll get let me get this over here right quick the setup is we were going to do a four gear lock playthrough because he did say he wanted to see that so we're going to play with picket and gilly boomer and Tink. Now, Picket, Boomer, and Tink, if you remember, were the original three gear locks. And so we've actually added in Gilly um, as our fourth gear lock. And he gave two options for um, the Tyrant. And I chose the one that was a little bit longer. Uh, and I chose Duster. So we would be playing against Duster. Um, I've got a, I don't have the, uh, I have the adventure map, but just because of space requirements and confinements, I do not have the map out. So I'm going to keep a, a tracker up here in the corner and keep track of our days and our progress there. And, um, also, uh, so you guys, uh, can see, I'm going to have, uh, pull up a dice tray here in the bottom right down here which you'll see right there and I'll put the cards for the encounters and then the dice and all that there but this way I kind of wanted to try to get it to where you guys could see all of the characters because I know in the last playthrough and you really couldn't see everything so uh, hopefully this will work a little bit better if you want to see something different or you have a better idea better way for me to set it up with this basically one camera I've got for an overhead shot then definitely let me know in the comments below and uh, we'll see what we can do but otherwise I think we can get started so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna read you Duster's card and um, we're going to get started on this thing so i'm going to try to basically probably do one encounter um an episode um maybe two if they go quick but probably one that way especially since it's longer if i mess up on somebody's skills or something um you guys can 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 help me catch that if i miss it and i can correct that before i get too many videos in doing the wrong thing so let's start whoops Let's start with Duster. Duster's card reads, only recently, uh, only recently risen to power, Duster 
gosh, you know what? Let me just let me just leave the card out here because it's not gonna work as well as I thought. Only recently risen to power, Duster seems to have her own agenda when it comes to the Evans. She's already amassed quite the following after the ruler. Uh, after quietly assassinating the previous ruler of Ebonheart and claiming his followers as her own to command, constantly searching for something, Duster remains a mystery. So she uses five of basically the seven, six or seven factions. So there's a ton of, uh, ton of um, baddies in here. Good mix of baddies. Uh, Ten progress points required. Thirteen days in. Um, so the final round and, and I guess this is kind of preference. Some people would not want to look at this. Um, well, you know what? I'm not going to show it to you, but, uh, there will be decisions, um, that I make based on what I know is coming about, you know, special abilities and stuff like that, um, for Duster as we progress through the days. Um, so... There we go. All right. Cool. Um, do, 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 do. All right, cool. So that's who we're going to take out. Uh, this is her dive. If you're, in case you're wondering, why am I showing you there? When I can show you there. So she's got some gear lock thingies and a blade thingy. There's the blade thingy and then the gear lock thingies. So, get a little preview there. And then she has several skills. Uh, nine health, six plus initiative. She's always on the top. Three attack, two defense. And then some skills, but she can target up to three uh, gear locks. So, she will be fun once we get to her. But, enough of that. Let's go to... The De Numero Uno for our characters. And, of course, if you know anything about Too Many Bones, you know this. If you don't, then here's a little something for you. Uh, the first three days are always the same uh, right now. However, I will say, and this is a plug for it, when um, Undertow is released, the expansion is released, there is going to be a campaign mode. And that's actually going to change the way the day the days work. The first three days is going to have more variability, and it's going to be really really neat. They have not yet released a lot of details on that, but just know that it is coming, and you'll be able to fight multiple tyrants instead of just basically doing one tyrant, and and then that's kind of it, and you'd have to go all the way through uh, the full set of rounds uh, days to do another tyrant. So here we go, first card. Leaving Obendar, only 12 hours till dawn and the send-off ceremony that will no doubt change the lives of every remaining gear lock and likely every life in Daylor. Weapons and supplies are ready to go, but the night is young and adrenaline fills the veins. It's clear no sleep will be had tonight. There's sure to be some shady peddlers in dark alleys ready to deal in loot. Then again, some last-minute training could pay a nice dividend by morning. So what to do, what to do. So we've got two choices, and let me bring that up for you. Uh, essentially, well, you know what? Let me do this. I don't know why I did not think of this before. Hold on. Um, well, I don't know why I didn't think of that before. So essentially, we can get two training points, and neither one of these are combat-based. We can get two training points, or we can get one training point and everybody gets a loot um typically most of the time i go for ability points training points and not loot because loot will come with combat um so i don't really see a reason to not do that this time around so let's start with um, let's start with Pickett. All right, so basically, um, Pickett, his deal is he's a lot of defense, right? All his abilities are defense-based abilities, and he's got some stuff to move around the board, take hits, maybe uh, gives him a little bit extra defense to everybody else. Um, 
so I think the first thing that I want to do for him is because he's got one attack and two defense. Uh, I think I want to give him one dex. All right, so that's one point. So we're going to put the one here. So now at least he has full access to his attack and defense. Um, and then early on, um, hmm, I don't know if I should go for health, get a little extra health, or if I should go ahead and get some of his, this is the captain profession, so this is going to give him additional attack, additional defense, um, that sort of thing, maybe even health regen. Um, hmm. I think I think I'm just gonna go with base stats for this first time around, and then we'll do the other. So I'm gonna put a second point in health, and I'm gonna grab another chip here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now he's got his six health, and that's gonna be his two points, and that completes picking. So let's go over here to Boomer. I think. Uh, Boomer's got pretty low health, so ranged, uh, ranged baddies may make short work of, of that. So, um, I think we're going to do one point in health for now, and maybe one point in attack since it's going to be ranged, and then we'll worry about getting the grenades after we start you know, actually building up, um, building up bombs over here with this counter. Um, but of course, in order to do that, take this out of the way for now. In order for us to do that, we do have to roll a training attempt on our attack. Currently, our attack is one, so we're going to roll one attack die and hope we don't get a bone. Unless we get a bone and we can't do attack dice. That's lovely. So now I've got a choice. Either I could do another health or I could go ahead and grab the frag. Man. Uh, let's go ahead and... Or I could do decks, but I got plenty of decks, I think. Uh, man. Uh do defense um well mm. yeah I guess yeah you know, I guess let's just go ahead and do the frag since I can't do the attack that's that's a bummer and let's give he yep give the one health that's a total of four there and that will take care of boomer and then we got Tink. And Tink is, in my opinion, probably one of the hardest to play. And there's still some things that I do not understand about Tink. The first and foremost thing, and this is for you guys watching, if you can find the answer, I have not been able to find a sufficient answer, um, is one of the abilities of Tink, the main ability of Tink, is to build these bots. So reading from her sheet here, all right, this is her sheet, and this backside tells you all about how to uh, do the bots. It says on the building bot, uh, uh, targeting, attacking, tanks and bots. Tanks are ready to use out of the box, but first you need to understand your options. Uh, so I'm looking at it, it's an 8, on the innate over here. So the innate says, an 8 bot builder. Tink starts with build 1.0 in spider bot 1.0 skills, so that's... Boinky boink, right there. You may enroll, you may roll and slot in number six, which is right here on the mat. Uh, your build die, 1.0 or 2.0, so this die, or um, we can, if we get the spider bot 2.0, then we can get the build 2.0 die. That's going to take us some skill points to do before battle and set its orientation. In battle, you may roll or reroll a build die to allow for new attachment options. So I can roll this and reroll this 
once during a battle, if I want to change the orientation, if the die just doesn't line up with the attachments that I've purchased, that I've uh, used to buy with my skill points. But my question is, so if I build this bot, and I have both of these bots, then at what point in time do I get to roll and slot the build 2.0 die that would be down here? That's what I don't understand. So if anybody can find an answer to that, I would greatly appreciate that because I ain't got a clue. So having said that, um, first things first, uh, I think Tank also is pretty low on the stat side, so I think one health is going to be something we need to do for sure, just in case we get a little damage coming our way. Um, and then I believe hmm, um, then I think. I want to take the firing arm, which is right here, dice number 10, um, as my second uh, pick. And I got to find it. There it is. Um, so that's going to let me shoot a non adjacent enemy. So hopefully that will help do a little bit more range damage. I uh, got a lot of range damage. Hopefully, you know, Pickett can hang in there and Gilly can help with that along with the companion. So speaking, and that's the second dice by the way, one, two. Speaking of Gilly, good old Gilly is ranged based. Uh, there are some traps, there are some um, companions, some pets. Um, so there you go. Uh, Early on, I believe, um, I believe the what we're gonna do firstly is get a defense. That's easy. That's free. And then. Mm, Um, on the traps, so let's look at the traps right quick. Rusted spikes. Um, let's see here. Let me find it. Let me find it. Where are you at? Good grief. I know you're here somewhere. Spikes do number of true damage. Move unit to an adjacent lane of trap position of open. So that says they come on the board. They're going to take a damage or two, depending on how I roll. Um, woven snare. Uh, that is basically a debuff, and that is um, reduces the attack stat. So they could reduce their attack stat by one or two, which could be very, very beneficial for some of those huge attack dice monsters. And that's for the battle, so that actually stays with them the whole time, which is really nice. Um, and then Hidden Rut... Um, basically it stops their movement, um, if they get hit by it, um, and what happens is you, you put that down and then when the baddie walks over it, then you actually roll it. So there's a chance that when you put that down, that it's actually really not going to fire uh, you could roll too high. So, um, I'm, I'd like to take health because four health is not a lot, but that woven snare could come in really, really handy. So I think I'm actually going to take, uh, and this was one of the things that, uh, this is our subscriber, uh, his name, I will find out and put in the comments below, uh, in the description. Uh, wanted to see was more of the traps because I think you, you see a lot of people play with a lot of the the arrow stuff but with four I think the traps um, and I probably won't probably won't focus as much on the companions because we have the spider bot and we have lots of range 
Um, so I'll probably focus more on the traps and some of these other specialty archer based skills uh, for Gilly the Ranger in the Ranger line, in the Marksman line, and then some of them in the Trapper line there. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually take Woven Snare for our second uh, item, our second skill point. That completes all the skill points uh, for all of our gear locks and as such the encounter card is completed so we gain one progress put that there and I'll update the tracker here in a minute we gain one progress and it is the end of the day so uh, there is a whole uh, end of the day routine that we go through the rest and recovery phase so at the end of the day uh, we trade loot. Well, there's no loot to trade, so that's easy. No pick, uh, lock picking. We can rest and rec and then, so there's no locks to pick, so we go on. Then choose one of these three options, and they can all choose them individually, so they don't I have to choose the same thing. They can choose different things if they want to. They've got rest and recover. Nobody's been damaged, so there's no reason to do that. Search for better loot. Nobody has loot. Or scout. So we're going to scout. Uh, we're going to roll a d6. So we're going to start with Picket. Um, now, before I do that, let's talk for just a second about Gilly's ability. It's innate. Uh, Gilly's innate is before battle, reveal a baddie in its active stack. So we can basically, for free, before battle, reveal anybody we want to reveal. <clears throat> so, uh, and that is, it's before battle, so... At the end of the day, Gilly can also choose to scout. So, whoops. So that's uh, that's what we got going on there. So let's scout and see what happens. We'll start with Picket. Okay, that's a one point. So the one point we have, and let me get this up. A mis whoops. mischief one, goblin sandbagger, one attack, one defense. Uh, two health, four, uh, uh, four initiative, and it is ranged. Um, mischief, that's going to be where it removes the defense die, um, or removes the die. I think it's defense die, but it may just be a die from the active slot uh, after it's finished attacking. Mm, that's pretty easy, two health. I'm not really worried about him. We'll keep him, then we'll go over here to Boomer. And Boomer rolls, Boomer rolls a four. So a four is a slightly more uh, advanced battle. We could do a one or a five, but knowing that we're going into the next day uh, fighting a five, let's go ahead and see what we've got. All right. And the five we got is a Troll Sage, Thick Skin and Inspire, uh, six health, four, gosh. Six health, four initiative, two attack, one defense. It is melee based uh, and targets the strongest on a tie. Um, yeah, the thick skin is going to be a problem, but I think we'll be okay. We know for sure we're going to face it. We know for sure we're going to face the mischief. So we'll just see what happens. Gilly next. Ooh, Gilly roll a six. Now, I probably should do another five, but... Since we rolled a six, let's just go ahead and look at a 20. Okay. Yeah, that's an honor griffin. Eight health. Uh, dive flight can stun. Five attack dice brings two five point baddies with it and his melee. Yeah, let's send him to the back. I mean, I know there's no good one. But that's still just not that's that's not just not good. That is Petrocious. Uh, finally, here we go. Old Tinkster here is looking at a one. So we know that we've got the one we scouted earlier. So let's see what the next one in the stack is going to be. That's going to be a Troll Brute. Uh, thick skin one, careless. Uh, on a bone, hurts himself. That's great. One attack, one defense, three health, 
one initiative is melee targets one so yeah he's uh, there's no reason not to keep him so there we go and uh, let me make sure I get these all back in the right stacks and there we go all right cool so that is the end of day one so at the end of day one we've got uh oh now oh click the wrong thing that means at the end of day one we did receive a progress point right in the bottom right of the card there so we did get one progress so let's upgrade that to progress one so now we have one progress and in the next episode we will start day number two where we will have our first actual battle so again Apologies for the oversight in the previous playthrough, uh, especially since it was so close to the end. Uh, I will tell you, in the previous playthrough, the episodes you didn't see, uh, I was successful in the next two days and um, saving most of the grenades for the final battle. Um, Boomer uh, was able to do a ton of damage, especially to the Goblin King. Mostly, though, because the Goblin King's specific card that allowed us to attack him, basically the throne. Normally, in his encounter, you have to kill the, the throne before you can attack him. And the only way to hit the throne is to be standing right beside it and, and basically melee it. You can't range attack it. So we had completed the encounter card that let us essentially get rid of the throne uh, at the onset, at the very beginning of the encounter, so we could immediately target the Goblin King, and uh, yeah, Boomer just naded like World War II style uh, the Goblin King's area and just decimated uh, decimated him pretty pretty quickly. It may have lasted, I think it might have lasted three rounds, maybe four, but. Uh, most of the big hitters got massive damage and then we were able to get up to him and chip away at his defenses pretty quickly uh, and get some a couple of really good rolls in, fortunately. Uh, and so there you go. But this is going to be awesome. This is going to be fun with four. Uh, definitely changes the dynamic. I mean, the style that you use to play with three is, you know, if I was playing with three, I'd probably use... Um, even if I didn't have Pickett or Boomer and still had Tink and Gilly, I'd probably definitely have more of a focus for Gilly on the companions to help. But with a full complement, uh, I mean, the only thing is I am ranged heavy, so you know that I don't that could come that could be a factor. But at least with a ranged, uh, hopefully you know I can hit whatever I want, whatever I need to on the battlefield. And if I need to grab a companion just to kind of use it to block. And then, of course, use the spider bots um, potentially to block. Then I'll do that. But we'll see. Hopefully, you guys are going to enjoy it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you have any uh, tactical uh, ideas, definitely also leave those in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you're enjoying it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm looking forward to 2018. I think it's going to be a great year. And I will see you, ladies and gentlemen, in the next video. Bye, guys.